Good morning, what's up Grid Church? Hey, thanks for stopping by this morning. If it's your first time with us and you click that link, there's a bunch of information below. Fill it out, click the link. We wanna hear from you, wanna hear about you. We would love to get to know you. As well as if you are giving and supporting the Grid Church, thank you so much for that. We wanna encourage you to continue. God is doing such amazing things in and through your faithfulness. I'm going to hand it over this morning to our team to lead us in some incredible worship, and I'll be back in a few minutes to bring the talk this morning. You unravel me with melody, you surround me with the song of deliverance. From my enemies to love my fears of God. I no longer say to fear. I am a child of God. I no longer say to fear. I am a child, a girl. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called. I've been born again to your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I no longer say to fear. I am a child. I no longer say 
am so pumped to be bringing the talk this morning. If you have been with us since the beginning of the Grid Church a year and a half ago, you know that we launched in the book of Mark. And every single week we talked verse by verse through the book of Mark. It was the coolest ride and we actually finished that just last week. Pastor David shared the last talk on our book of Mark. So this week I had the opportunity to just share with you um, something that just God has been speaking to me lately personally and I feel like um, it's it's a word for now in this season, and I hope that it is encouraging to you the same way that it has been to me. So out of all the things this morning and all the places that we're going to be in the Word, funny enough, we are back um, for a passage in Mark. So we are going to be this morning in Mark chapter 4. You can turn, or it's going to be on the screen as well. Um, and I titled the talk this morning, Conformed Through the Storm conform through the storm. So we're going to pick it up on um, Mark 4 verse 35 and we're going to read to verse 41. Um, join along with me again. It'll be on the screen below as well. On that day when evening came, he said to them, let us go across to the other side and leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was and other boats were with and a great windstorm arose and the winds were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. You know, we've all heard that phrase, the calm before the storm, right? I actually grew up in Florida. And so being a Florida girl, I was very accustomed to hurricanes. And I have, I have a vivid memory of actually, I think I was probably like 10. Um, and I believe it was Hurricane Andrew was coming through and we boarded up all the windows of our home and we actually, my whole little family, we slept inside this, I don't know, it was like a storage closet and we pulled like a little TV antenna in there. We had these canned goods and water stacked up like as high as we were and I just thought it was literally the greatest thing ever. Like it was so fun to me. Then later in life, I moved to the Midwest and I experienced my first tornadoes and those were not as fun. I don't know if there's any storm lovers out there, um, but my husband David is a real big fan and he is that person that, you know, I get the alert like tornado watch or warning, you know, whatever. And I like want to huddle everyone. And he's that person that as soon as that storm alert, he's like out on the front porch, like viewing it or waiting for it, you know, that calm before the storm. He just loves it. And so that idea, the calm before the storm, this morning, I want us to reflect on something a little bit different. I want us to talk about the idea of calm within the storm. Calm before the storm. Again, we talk about that a lot. It's very common, but calm within the storm. What does that, what does that mean? Um, I think that all of us probably have that desire within us to remain calm in stressful situations, right? I mean, no one wants to say like, yeah, I panicked <laughs> or I freaked out. I mean, you know, we'd much rather tell the story. God, I was calm and collected and have it all together. Um, it's funny. I like to think of myself as that. <laughs> and I think it's hilarious because in most situations, I'm probably not that. But in those situations that matter, thank goodness, I specifically when it comes to my kids, I just have the ability, and I'm sure like a lot of moms out there, that when it's something with your kid, an emergency situation, you can leave the emotion out of it. You can jump into action and just in that moment, 
be calm for them and do exactly the steps that you need to do. And then once the situation's under control, then you can lose it and melt down. <laughs> At least that's what I do. Once it's all done, then I can collapse. But um, that ability to just remain steady in life's situations. And as I was thinking about this this week, I was just thinking of that idea that really that's just so much easier said than done, right? I think that this is one of my favorite passages because it's such a real life story of the disciples and a very real storm to them. I mean, a very frightening situation to them and they're very human reaction to it, right? We see their very human response, but then what I love even more in this passage is that it just illustrates for us the kind of God we have, right? The kind of God we have, and it really shows us what we can expect of Him. Not if we go through storms in this life, but simply when we go through storms, because they're inevitable, right? Storms are a part of life. And I feel like this story just really shows us who our God is in the midst of those storms. As I was reflecting this week and as God was speaking, I was just challenged with this thought, you know, relief from the storm is not the best thing that can happen to us. Relief from the storm is not the best thing that can happen to us. The best thing that can happen in the midst of is for you, for I, to be conformed into the image of Jesus. That's the best thing that can happen, is that we would be conformed into the image of our Savior. I know that when storms come, the enemy is right there, and he lies to us, and he um, causes us to feel those feelings of defeat and make us feel um, anxious and afraid and insecure and her and lacking purpose and all those things and those are very real human fleshly things that we experience and we go through but I know and I believe because I've experienced it in my life that God can also use those storms and those seasons to grow to grow our faith like possibly couldn't have happened without those storms to draw us closer to himself in a way that maybe we wouldn't have reached out if it weren't for that storm. We wouldn't have cried out to God in that desperation if it weren't for that storm. So I know that God can use those moments in our life to shape us and mold us um, more into who he wants us to be. I want us to think about this thought this morning. Jesus can calm the storm in your life. He can calm the storm in my life. When we even see it in this story, right? He has the ability to speak and action, to speak and it happens. So we know that he can, but I want to challenge us this morning with something else. Even if he does not, even right now, if you find yourself in a storm, in a season, and you're crying out to him and he has not calmed that storm in your life, I want to challenge you this morning that you can trust that you're not alone in the storm, that you can trust that he will uphold you through the storm, that you can believe that he is going to transform you and conform you more into his image and who he created you to be. And more than anything this morning, you can know that he loves you. He has not forgotten about you. He sees you this morning and he loves you. And I want you to be encouraged um, this morning by 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, it says, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. This morning, do not lose heart. Take heart this morning. I hope that you just draw encouragement no matter what season that you find yourself in this morning because I know from personal experience that if you're not necessarily in a storm, maybe you just came out of a storm and maybe um, you're going to be going into a storm, right? Storms are just a part of life. And so I think this morning it's a challenge for all of us. Do not lose heart. 
God is at work, just like the song Waymaker. He's at work sometimes even when we don't see it, right? And this morning, as we think about this idea of being calm within the storm and allowing Jesus to conform us, um, I think that there's three things that we can recognize um, from this passage this morning, and I want us to talk about them together. The first one this morning is recognize that the storm is not the focus. The storm is not the focus. So it's no surprise that storms, when they come, they threaten our faith, right? They threaten to sink our faith. Um, we are just going through life, and we're not talking about the little bumps in the road. We're not talking about the flat tire. We're not talking about, um, again, a hassle at work with a coworker. We're We're talking about the big stuff. We're talking about the stuff that causes us to question, right? The, the stuff that causes us to ask, God, are you there? God, do you hear my prayers right now? God, are you listening to me? The, the seasons that we walk through that feel so alone, um, that feel like you've lost your purpose, those, those are the kind of seasons that sometimes even cause us to question God's goodness toward us. You know, maybe it's illness for you. Maybe it is financial in a, in a job situation that has been going on so long and you've been praying the same prayers and yet you are not finding relief from that storm. Maybe it's marriage. Maybe it is just a season of loss of purpose and no direction. And it, well, one time you had it and now you're praying and you're seeking wisdom and again, you just don't seem to have the answers. Those are the storms we're talking about this morning. Maybe it feels like God is asleep, very much like how the disciples were experiencing in their storm. They they were like, why are you sleeping at a time like this? You know, they probably thought if he cared, if he understood, he'd be right if they're with them. I think so many times we pray we pray for healing, relief, reconciliation. All those things are good, and we should. And we should continue to pray and never stop praying. That builds our faith. But I think so many times we just want the storm to pass. Am I right? We just we just want it to be over. <laughs> um, God, teach us whatever you're going to teach us. Like, let the storm be over. Um, and we focus so much on the storm, on life's circumstances. But I just want to challenge us this morning that... The focus is not the storm. And I here's what I see in this story. Not the focus of the storm, but I think not taking away from the realness and the, the, the fear that that storm produced, but the focus here, I believe, is not on the storm itself, but the focus is on who. Who is in the boat with them? Who is in the boat with them during this storm? Just like we were talking about, Jesus can calm the storms of our lives. And, and I know you probably experienced that and I've experienced that in my life as well. And it's so encouraging and it's so awesome when that happens. But then those other seasons where we're like, okay, God, we know you've done it before. We know you're faithful, but why aren't you doing it again? I just want to remind us this morning that Jesus didn't come to calm all the storms of our life. That wasn't his purpose in coming. His purpose in coming was to save souls. He didn't come to give us a comfortable life, even though that would be awesome. Um, he came to defeat death. He came to bring life. He came to free people. And you know what? He didn't promise us a life free of trouble. In fact, here's your encouragement this morning. Um, the opposite. In John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. What? <laughs> in this world you will have trouble. But take heart. There it is again. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Wow. He didn't promise that our life would be free of trouble. He didn't promise that he would calm every single storm. What he did promise is that in him we would have peace. He did promise 
that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He did promise that he has already overcome and that we can take heart and we can trust him this morning. So wherever you find yourself this morning, he is going before you and he is with you. Take heart this morning. You might be saying, what about the whole, the scripture about casting our cares on God and him caring for us and I want us to look at that verse this morning too, because I was thinking about that this week as well. That's found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Let's read it. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Okay, so if you're like me, we talk a lot about the casting our anxieties on him part of that verse, right? Have you not heard that a lot? I have. Cast all your cares on him. He cares for you. And that is true. That is in scripture. And that is true. But how much do we hear about the first part of that verse, right? It says, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. What does that even mean? Because the two are linked here. It's literally one sentence. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him. It's one sentence that's connected. This idea of casting our cares on him isn't just this idea of just trying to avoid all of life's unpleasant circumstances, but rather it's a submission. It's a submission to whatever circumstances and seasons we find in our life, whatever, um, if we're following the Lord, whatever season he has us in. It's a submission of that. It's a surrender of that. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Are you willing this morning to lay down your life, to surrender it? And all that that means, to lay down your rights, to lay down, um, again, your desires, and to say, God, I am yours. Have your way with me. Have your way in me. Have your way through me. You don't know what God wants to do through through you and this storm. You don't know how he wants to use it for his glory. So this morning, I want us to be challenged to lay down our life as, as a submission and as a surrender to him. And as we do that, we can cast those anxieties on him. It's not too heavy for him. We can cry out to him, but not without surrender. This morning, I was so encouraged by that, and I hope you are too, surrendering our life, our rights, our desires for His purpose. So this morning, the focus is not about the storm. Number two this morning, the storm is about a battle. And this morning, I'm not trying to diminish anyone's storm that they find themselves in because they're real right? They are real. I have been through them. I've walked through them. I know every single person watching right now has or is in one. They are real. Nor would I suggest that you cannot cry out to God in the midst of those times and tell him all those things. We see in the story, he's a God full of compassion. He does, after all, get up and calm the storm in this story. So absolutely cry out to God. Tell him their storms are frightening. You might be thinking that your boat is literally capsizing right now, that you're not going to survive. Call out to him. He is there with you. He will show up. This morning I want us to think about this idea that Jesus did not take them across the sea for them to drown, right? He did not take them across the sea just so they could experience a storm, that there was a purpose. He takes them across the sea so that they can participate in a work of his redemption. If you read on in this story into chapter 5, you see that when they landed at the other side of the sea, there was a demon-possessed man there. And you know the story, the miracle of our God setting this man free. He had a destination in mind, our God. He came to save souls. So the storm this morning that you find yourself in, it's a battle. It's a spiritual battle. We're not fighting against the things we can see. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. It is spiritual. And we're not alone in that. The disciples weren't alone. Literally, Jesus entered the darkness with them. He entered the evil, the suffering. He entered it with them. And then he transforms from within. In. That's what I want us to just remember this morning is that he transforms within the storm. If we are following him, 
then sometimes, yes, we are going to enter into those seasons. Again, that might seem dark, that might seem confusing, but he will not leave us. He has a purpose and he is working in the midst of it. The storm is not where you face your enemy, even though sometimes it feels like that. The storm is where we meet our God. The midst of the storm, God is there. He's always been there and he shows up right when we need him, right when we call out for him. I think so many times it's when we come to the end of ourselves that we see the power of God at work in our lives. Isn't that true? Sometimes when things are going great, we don't maybe seek him the way that we do when our world is literally spiraling out of control and out of desperation. We, we feel that need for him. He is there always, but so many times it takes those storms to really push us toward him. Holocaust survivor Corey Ten Boom said, there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. Wow. There is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. How can you really absorb this truth unless you were in a pit deep enough to make you doubt it? Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe that pit is so deep this morning and you you find yourself in a place of doubt. You, you, your faith is strong, but it, it has been shaken. And you find yourself in need of the reminder of his love. This morning he's here and he wants you to be reminded of that. Maybe you identify with the disciples and maybe, again, like we've been talking about, you are so frightened and so fearful um, and don't know where God is in the storm. You feel like that he's literally asleep and you're crying out to him. Maybe you identify with the man on the other side of the sea. Our God is pursuing you this morning. Our God has one purpose and that's to draw you to himself. So this morning, if you find yourself so far from God and maybe you just clicked on this link this morning by chance and you're like I don't even know why I'm still watching this morning God wants you to know that he is here and he loves you and he is here to he wants to change your life and he wants to break those those chains and to set you free and let you experience all that the amazingness of our God this morning you didn't click on this link by accident so if you find yourself again struggling like the disciples or identifying with the man on the other side of the sea and struggling with your own sin and just needing a savior this morning he is here he is here for you no matter where you find yourself he is here this morning psalm 121 verse 1 I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The storm is about a battle this morning, a battle for our souls. The last thing this morning is number three, the storm doesn't have to be within us. This morning, the waves around your boat may be crashing all around. Maybe it is filling your boat and you feel literally like you are about to go under. I wanna encourage you this morning that the spirit of Jesus lives in you and though the storms may rage all around, it will not overcome you. You will not drown. This morning, the storm can be all around you, but it is not within you. There is a difference. The spirit of Jesus lives in you. And what I want us to notice about the description of the Lord is that it says he neither slumbers nor sleeps. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. 
when we consider that in regards to this passage, it's so important for us to realize the divinity and the humanity of Jesus. In the humanity side, Jesus experienced everything we do, including being tired. But in the fullness of divinity, our Lord never falls asleep at the wheel. He never falls asleep. He never fails to keep watch over us. And I know that there's times that we feel that he's asleep. And, you know, those prayers, we just just wonder. It's like we know he's listening. We know he's always there. But, again, when there's no answer, the doubt creeps in, right? And sometimes, like the disciples, we want to accuse him of, why are you sleeping? <laughs> Wake up. Help us. But I think sometimes we're looking for God to call in the storm when what God is wanting for us is to trust him in the storm. Not for him to rescue us out of it, but for us to trust him in it and allow him to conform us and to do the work that he wants to do in us. I think this passage demonstrates the kind of God we have. We have a Father in heaven who never slumbers or sleeps. He is not upset by the storms of life that we face. He is a God who can give great calm, and the scripture says a peace that passes all understanding, even in the midst of what can appear to be great danger. He is a God who is in control of all things. How many of you need to be reminded of that this morning, right? He is a God who is in control of all things, including the wind and the waves. He is a God who wants us to have faith in him and be at peace within ourselves because his spirit lives in us. Even when the storms are raging around us, that our spirit, that we have a calm within us because his spirit lives in us. He can calm any storm, but sometimes he chooses to let the storms rage so that we can turn to him and we can trust him and he can work in us. Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. This morning, I just want you to be encouraged. I know that we are in such a unique time in our world, <laughs> nationally, globally, you watching at home, personally. And this morning, I want you to be reminded that in the chaos, that in the confusion, in the uncertainty, that our God says to be still. He's not sleeping. He's watching. He's with us. This morning, he loves you so much, and he's here this morning for you. And my prayer this morning is just that when those storms come, and again, maybe that is right now in your life, this morning, um, that in the midst of them, that we would just learn to simply be still and to know, not just know here, but know here that our God is God and that he's in control. Would you pray with me this morning? God, we thank you, Father, for your word. God, we thank you for your promises. God, we thank you that when our boat is rocking out of control in the waves and the storm is all around us, Father, that you are you can always be found right in the midst with us. God, and this morning, I just pray for every single person watching. And I just pray, God, that no matter where they find themselves, God, in the seasons of life, Father, that this morning they would be reminded of your love. God, they would be reminded of your plan for them. And maybe you are out there this morning and something I said this morning resonated with you. Something I said this morning tugged on your heart and that wasn't me and that wasn't um, any word that I spoke, but that was the Holy Spirit and that was our God. And that feeling, that's Him speaking to you right now because He loves you so much. And so 
this morning, if you want to ask him to be the Lord of your life, I would love to lead you in that prayer this morning. I'm going to pray it and you can pray it right where you're at at home. There's nothing special about specific words, but the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe it in your heart that you are saved, and that's what we're going to do this morning. Dear God, we thank you for your love. I thank you for your sacrifice for us. This morning we come to you just as we are. And we acknowledge that we are in a need of a savior. I ask that you would come in my heart. I ask that you would cleanse me from all of my sin. God, I acknowledge my need for you. I am nothing without you. I declare that you are Lord of my life, and I invite you in to take control over all of me. I will live for you all the days of my life. I surrender my life to your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, church. How awesome is that? Hey, if you prayed that prayer this morning, maybe you've prayed it before, maybe this is the very first time, there is information below that you can reach out and connect with us. We would love to hear from you. We would love to walk you through the next step on your journey with our Lord. We are so excited about all that God is going to do in your life. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Follow us on social. Stay up to date for all that God is doing and our reopening in person of the Grid Church soon. Um, I'm going to turn it over to the team to close us out this morning with some worship. Have an amazing week. Love you guys.
Thank you.